So when you look at the uh, entire page for the composition, try to look for the placement. Let me put this down in the lower left uh, corner here. And uh, try to look at the overall. Again, there's a, there is a line of action just like in any of the animation pieces. <clears throat> there's going to be a length and a width, so just the overall shape of this glove, just trying to estimate it around here. It's a very free-form organic piece. <clears throat> you know the hand goes in here, so I'm going to take a look. At least the bottom of this glove is somewhat straight, and I'm going to elevate this just to give it a rectangle shape, just to try to help me. It may taper, and all these distances may change once I start to pinpoint these segments. And when you think of the hand for the animation where it's a glove, this is a glove, so it makes it that much easier. And just trying to break it off into planes. So if you can see these beginning shapes, at least that's close, if this was all raised up, in it, which it's not. <laughs> and then these fingers, so I'm kind of looking at where along here they would divide. They would be larger to smaller as they go back. And in this case, the thumb coming around here. So again, it's based off a rectangular shape. And that's that's kind of the beginning of what I'd look like. The second time going over it, so now I've started off with the length, the width, and the height. Went through it and kind of estimated some of the basic geometric shapes that would put this together. And now I'm just going to be a little more focused on the third time going through the drawing. So the opening of this glove, this one, the detail that's very obvious is this curve that leads into the glove. So it's a very fluid line. Building it up here. And then you can kind of see some of the overlap. So I'm just kind of sketching it. I haven't really gone into too much um, definite detail, but it flattens out. So all of this is coming off. And there's a, like I said, the geometric parts are very nice. Here's a snap. Not O snap, but there's the snap right there. It's a cylindrical, elliptical shape. Helps me out. And then this is rounded off. Now there's, just like on a, a coil, this outside edge is a cylinder. It's just a wrapped coil. If I did some cross contour lines just to show it. And these are all light enough that I don't have to see the entire piece. I can bring this part back. Okay, so I'm still looking at proportion, even though I'm trying to plot this out. So that's the entrance for your hand for the glove. And there I go. Now there's a logo on the back of this hand on a patch, and it's a, a square with rounded corners. So as long as I keep that in mind, these are kind of going up the back of the hand, and there it is. There's the logo. This part kind of has a tapered, funnel-y looking shape. Again, just kind of estimating it. Here's another piece. This part to here is very confusing, but I just look for some planes as best I can to get that structure over there. I'm building it up like that. Taking a look at this, these start off, but then there's a big taper to it. If I round off these Corners. This also has a thickness to it. It's elevated off of there. You can kind of see it. And then all these pleated edges. I have no idea how they're putting the stitching in there, but that's what they're doing. And then this part kind of tapers in. This becomes very, very loose. And bringing this part up over here. Okay. Now taking a look at the fingers and keeping them just like flat rectangles, just like your own hand. And it doesn't hurt to exaggerate the geometry to it. Okay, and then this is the logo for Wilson. And now you have a little bit closer to what this hand kind of looks like with the glove in there. So now, 
I have it laid out, start off with length, width, and the height. Little gesture in there, line of action, breaking down the shapes a little bit. <coughs> and now I'm going to try to focus in with a little more detail, just like with the lines. And the heavier the lines, it's not going to hurt it. But uh, it's going to be able to allow me to shade this. And by zooming in the reference, it's pretty incredible to see the see that much detail. So <coughs> I'm just going to kind of go through this right in the front here. Here's the texture. Still not worried about the texture. Just want to get the structure here. This line overlaps. Comes around here. Makes this round. And so just thinking of it as a contour. So you're trying to look at the outside edges of any of these shapes. And it's like I said. And I'm just going to take a look at the outline and try to really see that contour. And when I look at this, it has these fluted edges kind of coming in that overlap each other. And this is where this becomes pretty detailed. It almost looks like a folded curtain. And the more you really look at it, it starts to look like other things that you're pretty familiar with. So when you look at that, you might not see that at first. And again, it doesn't matter if the heaviness of this handling of the pencil isn't going to hurt it, because I'm going to probably lose some of that as I get in the shading. This part I might come back to and go right for the section that's coming across here. And if you, and if you make a mistake, just draw right over it. Don't worry about erasing it. It's not going to hurt it. Look at this patch for the logo. Try to follow that line. And the contour is the outside edge. Cross contour is when it goes over the top. Coming around here. So I'm, if you follow one of these lines all the way across. Now this has the fold of this coming up. So I'm going to add that in there. And you can see that when this wraps around, it goes to there. All these extra pieces in here. And even the line itself, it goes, th it goes thick to thin, wrapping around all those stitches. And then the logo's in here. So when you think of it, you're trying to draw something that's actually technically sculpted in here in the fabric. So you're getting a pretty good array of things here. This is all based off of this part. It's just kind of leaving that section here. Coming back to this piece, you may be able to see a circle within here that all these creases kind of wrap around to. Showing all this detail and then just kind of picking it up as you sketch it further. So this seam, I'm just going to put it on here because this seam acts as a cross contour line that helps define that shape and wraps it all the way around here. And when in doubt, put some cross-hatch lines in there to help you see what's happening. <laughs> the race is on. So this part here. So this whole thumb, you know, aside from the shading, just looking at some of the pieces that wrap around here. And then this whole knuckle business up here. So top of this, here's a, a piece that you can kind of see creases down. And it does take some time to really get it looking good. But angle off any of the folds, so make them jagged, because you're on a piece of paper doing this, not, not sculpting it. 
so here's this overall edge before it gets to the so now looking at these fingers it's not the cartoon hand but it does have five fingers there and they kind of lope over there must be lucky there's not a real hand in there For the beginning, there's kind of the piece, and then the, the last part is to, until you can always go back and forth to this, don't forget. But this now has the shading, so if you can take a look at something that's the obvious pieces, like this cylinder, if you can give it a little tone, this still has texture on it that wraps all the way around it, and you can kind of see this part, this cast shadow, has texture in it as well. build that up so you can kind of see it here. This whole section with all these ridges has a little bit of a shadow around it so they come out of it, but it's also in a shadow. And that'll build it up there. And then when you get into these creases, the light's coming from this direction. So just by simply putting a tone on the side, it's going to give me something to work from. This entire logo is in a tone. Put a little paper under the hand there. And then all of these creases are coming in this tone here and they also have a light, a light source to it. And then trying to take a look at each finger as a flat rectangular piece cut out of there. And then where these meet, these little creases, kind of meet in that section there. And just the hatch lines going with the cross counter was going to help with the shading as well, and with the dimension to it. kind of the maybe the fourth time across this thing and the next part just trying to look for heavier values even this logo is it has this dark value around it Build that in there and you can see these dotted lines here just for the stitching and then anything that you go back. Once you see the overall value, I keep trying to have you take a look at the contrast of your drawings to give it more richness with that value, just to push that in there a little bit more. Let's see how you can push that. So just by laying a tone over the top of everything, it'll put it in shadow and then you can go back in and, and pull this out right here and start to see some of the detail. And this is where the reflected light really shows because it's showing a lot of detail and structure of that globe. And here's a, here's a line right here, but it's also blended in opposite side of this, so you give a pretty good light source in here. Okay. So see how you do on that? Give that beginning in there. <laughs> 